We're pleased to have with us Adam Bond, the CEO of AFC Energy. Adam, good morning to you and welcome. Um, obviously, um, you know, the, morning. the hydrogen cell or the fuel cell battery uh, represents an alternative to lithium iron and to the path that we seem to have been going down with electric vehicles. Just tell us, why is your inclusion in this series going to be so critical for showcasing your product? Sure. Well, thank you, and, and uh, nice to be on the show. Um, it's a AFC Energy is a um, is is a zero emission hydrogen power generator. Uh, it utilizes our proprietary fuel cell technology, which uh, electrochemically converts hydrogen into into clean energy. And uh, we've been speaking with Extreme E for a number of uh, years now, or a number of months, I should say. Sorry. And, and if you think about the diesel generator market. Uh, worldwide. It's a $25 billion a year industry. And that industry is coming under great pressure in terms of regulatory constraints uh, with regards to emission standards. And, uh, and, and so Extreme E, who are operating uh, this rally series next year for the first time in some of the remotest locations in the world, um, <clears throat> the, whole, the whole agenda, if you like, behind these series is, is sustainability and promotion of that message. So to utilize a diesel generator when it is, is seen as a dirty alternative to, say, a hydrogen generator, was really part of what they were trying to achieve through the partnership with us. And so we'll be providing them with um, uh, clean energy to charge all of their vehicles for each race in some of the, the world's harshest conditions to demonstrate the operability of our system from the desert to the Arctic into the, um, into the Amazon rainforest. So uh, a, a great opportunity for, for the technology, great opportunity for Extreme and a great opportunity for AFC Energy. Well, we still seem to be some way away from a, a real tipping point in, in battery technology that would give us that big next leap forward for renewable energy. And it's clear how much the market is sensitive as the, uh, to, to this as well, given um, Tesla this week in their battery day seemed to disappoint investors uh, when they weren't able to showcase a significant step forward in this tech. Can you just help us out? How far away are we from one of those big breakthroughs here that will transform the industry? Uh, look, I think we're actually in the middle of that breakthrough today. Um, over the last uh, 12 to, to, to 24 months, we've seen probably for the first time in history uh, a, a convergence of uh, the technology readiness, not only in terms of hydrogen generation, but in hydrogen consumption. Uh, on top of that, you have uh, governments, which are uh, the, the policy agenda has moved on and matured, evolved significantly. You've got governments like Germany uh, during the lockdown saying that they're going to devote 9 billion euros to the hydrogen economy. France is putting 7 billion in, Portugal, 7 billion. The International Energy Agency has now asserted for the first time that hydrogen is part of the, the, the decarbonisation agenda. So the technology is now moving to a point of commercial readiness. The, the, the policy agenda has moved on. And you've got big business now for the first time uh, putting significant amounts of capital. You've got the, the Hydrogen Council, which has um, evolved over the last three years, originating in Davos uh, you know, three years ago. And, uh, and, and it now has 90 of the largest brands and organisations uh, working under its banner to try and promote the utilisation of hydrogen as a clean energy alternative. So if you look at where the forecasts are moving towards, You've got an agenda which has about well, just under 20 percent of the world's energy being supplied from hydrogen uh, over the next few decades. And, and so I think that that agenda of, of, of not will it or won't it, 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 it's, it's now how quickly will it actually start to penetrate the energy mix and support that decarbonisation okay. agenda that, that most economies are after. Adam, I'm going to hold my hands up. I, I get it. I'm hearing it all the time. In fact, I moderated a three and a half hour clean energy ministerial with 26 ministers on Monday where Fatih Biro and others really went for it on hydrogen. And I get it. So I'm, I'm, I'm on board. But there was a big takedown. Did you see it in the Times? I don't know. And they're saying there's nowhere near commercial red, uh, readiness. It's nowhere near uh, competing on, on a clean base as well. And I'll, I'll give you their three points very quickly. One, on present technology, it would take an onshore wind farm covering 18,000 square kilometres to produce enough electricity to create green hydrogen to power all the UK's long distance lorries. Two, blue hydrogen from natural gas um, basically relies on CCUS and what have you, which has never been successfully deployed. And three, hydrogen gas is at the moment twice as expensive as natural gas. Now, I, I get it, I'm on board, but there are some some big skepticism and big problems to overcome still. 
Look, I, I, I don't disagree I, in, in the sense that we are certainly at the, at the, at the top of our, our cost curve and there are some fairly aggressive agendas to drive that cost, uh, those cost numbers down. I think you've got, um, you, know, you know, the UK and, and, and the Prime Minister uh, yesterday stood up, or, well, virtually stood up in the, uh, the UN and, and, and was advocating very strongly the UK's um, offshore wind market. Uh, but as a complement to that, uh, saw a great opportunity for, for hydrogen in locations where you know, just pure electricity won't reach. Uh, the electrification of the market is where we're, we're moving, the energy market is where we're moving. And so hydrogen has a role to play alongside technologies such as wind, offshore wind, solar, and the like. So I, I, we're seeing it as very much a complementary technology to these, uh, to these existing, um, existing renewable sources. But, but I think in, in terms of where the traction is coming from, certainly we're seeing a lot of traction in stationary power. Uh, if you think about the off-grid power market, you know, the, the, there is there is no alternative. There is no electricity grid in those circumstances. You need an alternative to diesel. Hydrogen presents that alternative where the grid does not meet uh, or does not reach. And so the market in which we're, we're targeting as a company is very much things such as off-grid power uh, and, and moving towards marine applications in, in you know, powering propulsion of ships, auxiliary powers of ships, where, where again, utilizing wind farms, traditional renewables doesn't actually uh, work. No, I hear you, and it is very exciting, and we're watching the space as well. I get it from Marco Avira from SNAM all the time as well. Uh, just one quick question. It's not Arsenal Football Club Energy, is it? That's a strange acronym. No, it's not Arsenal Football uh, Club. Uh, we, we, we do get asked that from time to time. Um, <laughs> the AFC does stand for Arsenal, I feel so. I, I, I'm relieved because I'm no, no Arsenal fan. Thank you, Adam. Lovely to see you. Have a great weekend.